Hi guys, welcome to today's episode of Sodas and Popcorn Reviews and today we're going to be talking about a movie that has been very much highly anticipated and everybody has been looking forward to it and um, everybody pretty much has seen it now since it's been out for a while. I'm talking about um, Rattlesnake the Hanana Story uh, which is pretty much a remake of um, the classic 1995 Rattlesnake movie which a lot of us grew up watching and loving and you know, probably some hated um and was made by the legendary amaka igwe of blessed uh, memory so 2020 is the year and um, play networks is the studio where you have um charles of play and chris today um, producing uh this new material sort of the way they did um living in bondage from 2019 which was a really good movie and um, you have nicola sinugo returning to write the story um before i go any further let's check out the trailer and then we'll come back and know exactly what i feel about the movie i lost my father and mother what else is there to live for the world is a brutal place to live the leaders use the common man for their selfish gain how huh? Do you even sleep at night, mother? The politics of this world, the rich gets richer, and the poor, poorer. I was going to live life on my own terms, and let the chips fall where they may. We target, we plan, we execute. Daddy. The trailer is really dope, right? very cool you know you look you're looking forward to the movie and you're like oh wow this movie is going to have a lot of real cool stuff sorry guys the trailer is probably better than the movie yeah <laughs> i said it right off the top i'm just going to say my opinion is the fact that i think the departure of certain people from the story probably caused a, a, a bit of um uh i don't know i don't know what the word something was lacking something was lacking and i think it was the touch of steve gukas and uh, and um cj obasi and i'll tell you why now um ramsina returns to direct the movie um like he did in living in bondage and is the director of rattlesnake once again uh but a lot of things were really off course a lot of things were not properly done and there were more misses than hits for me the story was very incoherent in the sense that um, right from the beginning and maybe i should just do this and i just give a summarized review then i go into a more detailed review where i actually have a series of spoilers so my summarized review is the fact that i didn't really like the story because it wasn't well written the directing was also not the best because i felt like shots were wasted um it could have been a lot better uh, the narrative style got a bit tiring and sometimes felt a bit um, inconsistent. Uh, the acting, some did good, some tried to you know, channel their inner Tony Montana and things like that and uh, most, mostly didn't work out. And um, in terms of cinematography, yeah, good look for the movie. Of course, that it had that going for it. but. I wasn't really impressed with the visuals either because they could have done a lot more with the visuals. Um, so what did I really like about the movie? To be honest, not much. And that's just me being honest. <laughs> so that's just my summarized review. So now I'll be going into the more detailed review where I'm going to actually be breaking down the reasons why I felt this movie was not good. So spoiler alert, if you've not seen the movie. So the movie is centered around um, the story of a particular young adult, Ahana, who has to hustle and fend for himself, basically, when um, he's abandoned the world and things like that. And um, if you go back a bit, when they were showing his backstory and telling the story and things like that, there were certain um, there were certain elements that didn't quite add up right from the beginning for me. Inze and Ahana. Were they siblings or were they cousins? It's not quite clear because in some of the opening scenes, 
we had uh, Inze actually, no, rather uh, Ahana go to Inze and uh, Osasa Jibadi's house to spend some time and they said uh, something about them being cousins. I may be wrong, but I doubt. I remember this very well. Um, so once again, um, and it wasn't so clear if they were siblings or if they were cousins. So even basic things like relationships weren't well established because sometime down the line when it was revealed that um, uh, Inze was, um, 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 Amara was his cousin, and wasn't his uh, his uh, his sister? Um, nothing was said about Inze, and that put sort of like a vacuum in terms of are we looking at Inze and Hannah as cousins or as brothers? I'm not sure that was quite clear. Um, in terms of character decisions and how decisions were made. It's not. It's not so. It's not so. It's not spelled out. It's not um, well detailed. For example, the scene where they decided to go rob the parents. Um, for you to decide that okay, you're going to rob your parents. I think there's there has to be a better way in which you're going to make it known that okay, look, guys, we have to do this. Yeah, the stakes were high. This guy. His life was on the line. Um, Inze's life was on the line because he was only a really bad person and all that. But, you know, Inze, uh, Ahana says, I know where we can get the money. And that was pretty much the end of that conversation. We didn't see a detailed debate that goes on between the three of them where they're like, okay, you know what? Are you mad? <laughs> You're talking about us robbing. But they just went ahead and they just went about it. And then how did you know there was money in the house? Of that kind of amount and things like that after all you were not really even in that house you just got to lagos um the execution of how um his mom was killed that was really sloppy that was really sloppy in the sense that um the way it was done it could have been a lot better it was even vivid it was vivid it was even the people in the cinema we the people in the cinema that were trying to figure it out like okay what just happened uh oh the uncle was trying to grab a gun and then the mother stepped in front and took the shot it was very tacky ramson didn't do a very good job in terms of how he was going to shoot that scene and that's just one of the many mistakes or many issues i had with the movie in terms of the directing product placements were badly done in the sense that for example um shots where you're supposed to be having product placements for brands it's obviously product placement we all know it's product placement like there was a malt brand that they were trying to do a product placement for the logo was cut in half like it was more or less like figured out for yourself kind of placement and that was one of many issues many cases of wrong product placements there was even a particular product placement that um was badly timed you you have somebody about to be killed and then you're talking about how malt causes you your a particular variant of malt is healthy and <laughs> I just I just laughed in that particular scene. Um, I can go on and on about the various ways in which this movie was so poorly made, but uh, I think the summary is the fact that this movie was guided by a businessman, a socialite, Charles of Play, which that has um, that's not a bad thing, of course, right? You're a businessman. You decide to put some resources behind the movie and decide to make the movie but um i felt the movie was more focused on um the visuals rather than actually developing the story effectively the action scenes were not even they were in action the movie was pretty much drama and that was why i felt like okay a lot of things were wasted it could have been a lot better in terms of the writing in terms of even the acting um the character decisions, the decisions and motivations that the characters had were half-baked. They weren't fully, um, fully developed. They weren't, it, it was like a lot, a lot of the decisions that were made in the movie were just based on the audience is going to understand. Yeah, I know that sometimes we can 
the audience can be made to be intelligent to you know be able to understand certain things in the movie without explaining too much but i am um, in this case it's more of bad writing than actually having a situation whereby you, know, you treat the audience as being intelligent this movie is made by a socialite it's produced by a socialite so i expect that of course you would have to push his brand and i mean you could see from some of the placements and things like that that okay he's obviously trying to tie in his brands and things like that um but i felt like um like i already said i felt like they, they abandoned the craft for you know the visuals and um, a lot of things were left you know hanging and a lot of things were just not right for example um uh, another thing that i didn't really like about the movie was the relationship that developed between ahana and naza it didn't make sense to me right because they're cousins we know that these guys are obviously not the model citizens so um we don't expect they're anti-heroes so anti-heroes are bad people with you know good sides and all that so uh incest is not is not is not uh, exclusive acting was over exaggerated and over dramatized in a lot of scenes by a lot of characters of course inze being number one um ahana being number two um, and it seems like they were trying too much to have this what's the word i'm looking for now this very cool and sophisticated feel and all that to these guys at the same time you know, uh we're, we're trying to show them as being you know down to earth and things like that but i'll, I'll just say it was overacting in a lot of cases for for this um characters now richard makes an appearance richard from living in bondage makes an appearance in this movie and he is Richard from Living in Bondage and he introduces the six to Ahana, which he was trying to recruit him and say, look, I've been seeing all you've been doing. The six is watching, blah, blah, blah. What does this mean? This is pretty much showing us or opening us into an extended universe, the Play Network's extended universe, where you have all the stories connecting. You have um, Living in Bondage now connected to Rattlesnake it's cool it's dope right you know the idea of an extended universe where you have characters crossing over you finally have the crossover movie from living in bondage and this and, and nick uh, and all that it all sounds very cool when you're having one meeting when you're having two brainstorm sessions but what happens when you are two movies down the line three movies down the line when there are intertwined connections and permutations and combinations that you need to do at advanced levels when you have to think of advanced decision makings for characters motivations and things like that have they thought about it that deep i don't think so because with the kind of writing that i saw in rattlesnake i don't think these guys would have thought about about four layers five layers of relationships when it comes to building a universe building a universe is not easy ask justice league ask dc ask universal Universal tried it with their monster monster verse, Justice League. Um, DC tried it with uh, the DC universe, and they all failed because they were trying to copy the formula of Marvel. But guess what? Marvel took twenty movies and ten years to build its universe. Have you dedicated all that time to actually thinking carefully about? Um, this old universe thing that they're trying to introduce i don't think so i think they're just being too excited about the materials that they have on their hands oh we have this we have we have um we have uh, living in bondage we have this we have that oh let's let's create a universe and things like that no you have to do a lot of research and you have to do a lot of brainstorming a whole lot i'm talking about months not even maybe years of brainstorming sessions because story a must connect to story b must connect to story c and on and on like that and all the characters from a must connect to all the characters from b or else you're going to have a real flop on your hands so i'm curious to see how they execute this universe that they're trying to build but i'm almost certain it's going to flop i will be very happy if i'm caught if i'm if i'm actually wrong for me rattlesnake um the ahana story 
get popcorn and water, which is pretty much maybe nice. And I hope Inina, the serpent, is going to be much better than this because I was really disappointed because um, I really loved Living in Bondage. Living in Bondage was actually one of my best movies in 2019. And coming into this, I was looking forward to it very much. But seeing how it was executed, you know, a lot of things were just off. The old Tony Montana kind of death at the end and all that. Um, the reason why they were angry with him. I mean, you guys who are, are armed robbers, you went to rob a bank. You were supposed to be paid a million dollars, if I remember correctly. He gave you guys double that. You guys were caught by the police and you say he abandoned you. What was he supposed to do? <laughs> He has to, I mean, the moment you guys get into this kind of trade, you know what comes from it. So that's why I said some character decisions and things like that were just really all over the place. Hopefully, I'm in a much happier mood with the movie which I'll be reviewing. Um, I remain your host, Moiwa. Thank you very much for checking out this review. Till next time.